So the strategy I use when I'm analyzing PMAX data, and this is Micro's latest version 60, and this is generally what I do. I was actually asking, <laughs> I love when I get to just like throw Glenn into things, but uh, Glenn was doing some analysis on PMAX campaigns yesterday. And I was like, oh, how many asset groups do you have in there? And he's like, 12. I'm like, you have 12 in one campaign? And he's like, yeah. And then he was showing me how he's going through it. Um, the one thing I can say is you, if you're using micro script, it'll be much more transparent about why asset groups aren't working. And then from all the information you're getting there, you should be able to start um, putting different asset groups together based on the, da the data you're receiving. And hopefully I didn't steal what Glenn might say, but Glenn, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw you the mic. Sure. So the strategy I use when I'm analyzing PMAX data, and this is Mike Rhodes' latest version 60, and this is generally what I do. I create a 30-day version of the script. I then create a 14-day version of the script. I then create a seven-day version of the script. And then I will have another version of the script that I will look at to compare the date of 7, 14, and 30. So if I want to look at the date 30 days prior to the last 30 days or 14 days prior to the last 14 or seven days prior to the last seven, that I'll, I'll have these four sheets open. And then I want to come into, when you're looking at the script, you've got this view up here and there's a lot of hidden sheets. And I like to turn on as much as I possibly can, especially this asset, well, the asset group's on by default. And if I've got multiple, you'll see this PMAX campaign, I've got multiple asset groups. And the way I've themed these asset groups is around keywords. So think of each asset group like an, uh, a keyword themed ad group. And I want to, like in this asset group, I'm, I'm targeting air purifiers for the home. So I will have, um, I'll, 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 I'll create air purifiers for the home, have a whole heap of keywords I've got from Keyword Manager. I then create all these headlines. I'll show you. So I've got a, um, I've got a prompt. I'll share that prompt with the group actually. This is why I give Glenn the mic because look at how much stuff he just gives you where I'm just like, yeah, like I think. Uh... <laughs> All right, so air purifier for the home. So what I will do is I'll grab I'll have all these prompts and um, I'll put them into chat GPT and I'll get, uh, I'll have these, the way I do the prompts is I've got all these famous copywriters, about 15. And I say, write me, write me some headlines uh, around this famous copywriter. And I'll just get them um, to do say four or five different versions. And I've got all these headlines, all these descriptions. And so then in my asset group, I will say for air purifier of the home, all my headlines and descriptions, long descriptions, or all that keyword specific. Air quality, I'll create air quality keywords and then I'll create it that way. Then I'll do best air purifier, carbon air filter. So what I'm doing, the, when I'm building these out, I will look inside the categories, the search categories, and have a look, sorry, the campaigns, and have a look at your keywords that are making you money. So if I'm looking at 30 days, I'm looking at this air purifier here, I can see large air purifier, sand, well, that's brown, brand to split in there, air purifier, best air purifier, air purifier reviews. These are converting for me. But if you remember, remember I showed you how I did feed gen and 
before I did feed gen, I would only get maybe these, these keywords would be getting me conversions. Now have a look at how many more keywords are getting me conversions. So I will grab keywords that are converting for me and then I'll create an asset around all those keywords. I'll create all copy around those keywords and see if I can convert that asset group going across different, different, um, different channels. Is that going to go after this, um, um, display? Is it going into the search network? Is it going into um, shopping? So that's generally what I do when I'm looking at this these keywords. That's what I'll do, and I'll start building out asset groups. Then I'll let them play out, and then I'll say, all right, I know that these are good. This, this campaign here, my feed only, is giving me a five. This is custom intent keywords mini is giving me a four. I'm turning off all these low performing ones and letting these run and see if the under that that spend that I was getting in the low performing assets goes straight towards the ones that are converting really well. Um, and then what I do is then because I know these were getting really good ROAS, I will bump my ROAS up another 10 or 15% along with the budget and see if I can push that a little bit further because I'm killing the things that aren't performing for me and I'm doubling down on what is and I want to just push that a little bit harder. I know that you can achieve this because this was giving me a five, that was giving me a four, that was giving me a four. And now I want you to go, see if you can get that with these asset groups. There's two campaigns here. This campaign's only got two asset groups. And this campaign has 12. Generally what I'll do, so, it, so I've, got, I've got my 30, 14, 7, and then I've got my different date ones. So I'll come into, oh, okay. I'll save that because I was going to talk about that later. So first of all, I want to go into my Google Ads account so I can see my dates that I want to grab. And I want to compare the last 30 days to the previous 30 days using this PMAX script. I'll come in to here. In the last 30 days. In the last 30 days, I'm looking at um, 27th to the 25th. So, so now I want to get data from February 26th to March 26th. So I'll come to this, my fourth sheet. I'll come into what data I want, and I want that, I've already done it, 25, 26, was it? 26 to 26, we'll do that, well, 25 to 25. So come in here, we've got 26, 26, right. Now, I need to come into the script, obviously. It is a little bit of mucking around, to do it but I, I do this pretty regularly so it's sort of automatic for me at the moment and I, like I said I've only just updated version 60 so I had to redo all four of these and remove some of the other ones so here's my different date one <clears throat> that's the one that I've updated these dates and I want to run that script now so I'll just go no wrong one that's the one I want I'll run so now I've got once that finishes and this ran yesterday now I'll have data I can compare <coughs> compare apples and apples with. So if I want to just look at my asset groups, how did my assets go? How did my asset groups go in the previous 30 days? So this is the last 30 days here. How did my asset groups go in the previous 30 days? The last 30 days were way better. Awesome. Now I can start doubling down and start punching up my ROAS. But we can't because I don't have any stock because it's selling like hotcakes. Um, so having having the ability, that's why I always have this different date script. And that's the one I'll change dates. So if I want to look at the last 30 days, I put these two beside each other and I'll bounce backwards and forwards. I always make sure I keep everything the same down the bottom. I always want to make sure all my tabs are exactly the same across all of them. So I know I can just go to wherever I want to go. If I want to look at the last 14 days, I'll grab the last 14 days, get the dates come into my different dates script, come into the script history and run it again. For the last seven days, I'll come into my different dates, change the date, 
and then then I can do a seven and fourteen and thirty day snapshot and see if there's a trend. Um, ideally, I'd love if if Mike could have this automatic. And one of the recommendations I'm going to ask him is, can we plot comparisons between different dates and have have some charts in there to see what, you know how our asset groups performing in seven, fourteen, and thirty day periods, how are campaigns performing in seven, fourteen, and thirty day periods. Um, at the present time, this is what I'm doing. It's manual, but at least I can see um, how something might be comparing. So, and if I'm looking at these asset groups here, this is the last 30 days. How did my previous 30 days go with these asset groups for my different dates? I'm looking at that data there, and I'm looking at conversion rates, ROAS, seven see that one there the air quality one in the previous 30 days was giving me a 7.9 ROAS the last 30 days it's giving me a one okay that's weird why is that the case I'll run a test pause that and see what I can do with these other campaigns this speed only it was 7.5 previous 30 days 1.4 okay Feed only has taken a lot more share there, probably taken some from some of these other campaigns. Now that I can see this data in the asset groups, I can run a test, pause some asset groups and see if those 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 asset groups that are performing are going well. Or conversely, I can break out, duplicate this and say, okay, well, if air quality was giving me If air quality was giving me eight ROAS, but it was it wasn't spending that much, four hundred dollars. Why don't I isolate that? Have one asset group in one campaign and maybe give fifty or sixty dollars a day, and see if that I can channel that asset group just by itself instead of spreading all the spend. Hi everyone, Glenn from Solutions 8 here, and here we are in the Solutions 8 test kitchen. It's actually physically my kitchen <laughs> that I've got my office set up in. Um, but this is where I'll be um, running tests, experimenting with things, playing with things. And what I wanted to do is shoot you a quick video on how I use 